Here's what it looks like when a Freedom Par Hex 4 by Chauvet stops charging. All four of the battery indicator lights flash together, and sometimes this will flash with them too. Here's how you fix it. Things you need, you need to get pliers, screwdriver, scissors, and a replacement power supply from ChauvetParts.com. It is part number BOM16. There's your item number, and there's your unit. Go to ChauvetParts.com, select your unit, select the part. Really easy to do. All right, here, here's how we start. Obviously, unpack, unplug this bad boy, and then take out one, two, three, four screws. Then flip it on its front and get these two as well. Six total screws. Okay, with the last of the six screws out, we now carefully fold it open. Kickstand releases up here just so you have a point of reference. Gently pull up and over towards the kickstand release button. Remember, things are attached, so be gentle. Here's the part that we are going to be replacing, the main power board. Evidently, the transistors are the most likely thing that go bad here. Before we continue on, make special note of the way that these cords are run and cable tied to these posts. What we need to do is get these four screws out from the back side here. There, move the kickstand. One, two, three, four. Okay, with the four screws now removed, I'll flip it back over and I'll start to unplug things. So I've got power here at the top. Just push in on this little tab. Focus. There you go. Push in on the tab and it should come right out. And then same over here for this one, push in on the tab, should come right out. This one is usually held in with a little bit of red tape, so you have to very gently pry it out. Note that it is a socket and a plug, so pull these things apart. I'll get a close zoom in here. You have a socket and a plug, so gently pry them apart. You may need to uh, score this reddish tape. With all the things disconnected, I just very gently pull it out. There we go. Next step, set this thing aside, and we're going to need these legs. Sometimes you need pliers with them, but these, evidently I don't. Oh, there's always one. That's why I say bring the pliers, just a very gentle twist, and off we go. All right, set this bad boy aside. Grab your new one, put the legs on. Okay, with all four legs on, and I just did it hand tight. It does not need to be cranked in there at all. I'm going to go ahead and try to weave it back in between these two zip ties, just like it was before. Also, to make sure you have the correct orientation, You'll want to look for the power input, which is labeled here. It says, very small print there, it says input, focus, thank you. It says input, and it says N and L. N is neutral, L is live. N is white, live is black. So yeah, it's going to go up on this end, which if you look on the other side, is on the power plug side. So power near the power end. Oh, I'm going to skip ahead because it's kind of a pain in the butt to wiggle these things on. Ultimately, it's not really necessary if you can't get the zip ties back around these legs. Okay, off camera, I got the zip ties back around the legs. I just had to feed it through, and now I'm going to line it up with the holes, which you can probably see are right over where my finger's pointing. And then we'll flip it over and put these four screws back in. One two, three, and then the fourth one down there. Just carefully line up the screw holes and then we'll get it going. Okay, and so we get the last screw in. It's also good to remember that as you're working on it, if you keep these cables connected, remember to support both parts. 
So that way, naturally, you don't put any strain on the circuit boards. So with the four screws back in place, one, two, three, four, the circuit board, sorry, the power supply is now firmly locked in place. Let's get these cables back in. So I'll fish out from underneath. Of course, I have clumsy fingers. We'll get these cables back in. Pause. Sorry to skip those parts. I figure nobody really wants to watch me trying to fish out a stupid cable with my fat fingers for five minutes, so I just cut it. Anyways, back on the game here. If everything's labeled, and every connector has a unique shape, so you really can't screw it up unless you try really hard. Red, VOC, green. VOC, I presume, means white, so we have red, white, green. Line it up. Connector will only fit in in one particular way. It's notched. Drop that one in. Same with this one. V minus V plus. Plus is always red. Minus is always black. When you're talking about DC, again, it'll only go in one way. It's got a clip. Drop that in. Carefully. Click. Done. The last one is main power. Between the two boards, the location of the power change. So here's the old board. Oops, turn that around. Old board, power is in the upper focus. Power is in the upper right. Now it's in the upper left of the new board. If you have enough slack, great. I don't. So that's where the scissors come in handy. We'll just clip one of the cable ties in the corner. Done. And then L is live, L is live, N is neutral, which is your white, and it's also clipped so it can only go one way, but if you fuck it up, you will destroy your unit. But it's pretty hard to do that. So get it in, clips into place, done. Now we just gotta put the screws back in. So as you do put the screws back in and you close up the lid make sure that you aren't pinching any cables or crushing anything because uh, obviously that would be a bit of a problem and then once you've got that in place I find that it is most helpful to put in these back screws first because otherwise the other screws will not align correctly so get them in push on the base to get them to line up and don't quite tighten them all the way so that way there's still a little flexibility when you want to tighten up the other screws. Okay, got these in. And again, I'm, I put it in all the way and then I take it out about a full turn just so that these four screw holes will line up appropriately. Also helps to have a magnetized screwdriver because, well, it's really annoying to get down in this hole, which is also part of why. I tend to skip these sequences because everyone knows how to operate a screw. If you don't, you shouldn't be trying this repair. So I finished putting in all the screws loosely, then I tightened them down so that way everything all lines up. Now it's ready to test. Hopefully this thing will not burst into flames. Plug it in. Et voila. The unit charges again. And there we go. That's how you fix a Freedom Par Hex 4 from Chauvet, one of the older models, when it stops charging. Any questions? Leave them in the comments. No, I'm not going to ask you to like, subscribe, and all that crap, because I don't give a shit. You probably just Googled how to fix this thing, and here you go. So you don't need anything else from me. Please don't like, comment, and subscribe, unless you actually need help, in which case, I mean, I'm just an amateur, so <laughs> I'll do the best I can to help you, but yeah, you're on your own. Good luck.